Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a look at the Age of Empires 4 tech tree. This is for the generic tech. So within Age of Empires 4, pretty much every civilization gets the same basic tech tree. There's no technologies or buildings that are excluded from certain civilizations. There are some units that are replaced or reskinned with Civ specific units, as well as also individual unique Civ specific technologies and units. So this is just going to be looking at the basic generic tech tree. So before we start, in the description of the video, I do have an affiliate link for buying Age of Empires 4 for 32% cheaper than recommended retail price. So if you do want to buy Age of Empires 4 and you want to get it cheaper, do check it out. So as you can see, this is the tech tree. It's not quite as familiar as what we probably used to within Age of Empires and it's not easy to read necessarily. But essentially it splits it into four columns, Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age and Imperial Age. Dark Age on the left there and these are all the buildings that you can get within the Dark Age. So we have the town centre, the house, the mill, the lumber camp, the mining camp, a farm, barracks, dock, palisade wall, palisade gate and outpost. Which is all pretty much the same as what you get in Age of Empires 2 as you start in buildings for the Dark Age. Now to find out what we can research from within those buildings we have to click into them and it will open up. A drop down menu so first of all we're gonna have a look at the town center so the town center this is where you drop off resources you can create villages and you can create scouts from there as well and the only technology that they've got is textiles so the scout is a lightly armed cavalry effective at exploring the world hunting the wildlife and herding sheep it's able to see into self forests it's got a high movement speed but it's very very weak in combat so textiles this increases villager health by plus 25 so it's a bit like loom from age of empires 2 in uh, some respects you're just not getting an attack upgrade or armor upgrade then we're going to have a little look at the mill so the mill uh, as you can see there in the, across the four columns we've got uh, the dark age technologies on the left imperial age technology on the right uh, but we have survival techniques and wheelbarrow within the dark age and then we get professional scouts in the feudal age along with horticulture and then fertilization and, and precision crossbreeding just do exactly the same as horticulture the wheelbarrow this increases the carry capacity of villages by plus five and the movement speed by plus 15 percent so quite a good technology to have perhaps a little bit expensive with 150 gold there but certainly something that's going to be worth getting and then we've got survival techniques which is the other dark age technology from the mill this increases villagers hunted meat carry capacity by plus 15 and hunted meat gather rate by plus 10 percent now i don't know whether it's going to be viable to get these in the dark age because uh, you are able to rush very quickly in age of empires 4 so it might be something you you delay until the feudal age to get these technologies looking at the feudal age technologies we've got professional scouts so the scouts gain the ability to carry animal carcasses and they deal plus 200 percent damage against wild animals so essentially what you can do with your scout once you've got this technology is go to your enemy base and lame all of their deer and bring them back to your own base and you get horticulture which increases the villagers gathering rate for food by plus 15 percent and then that also stacks uh, with the next two technologies you know one for the uh, castle age and the one for the imperial age so looking at the lumber camp we do have uh, quite a selection of technologies there uh, first one is dark age technology which is forestry which is fairly cheap but i don't know again if it's going to be something you're going to be prioritizing within the dark age it's probably going to be a feudal age uh, technology there uh, but this doubles the rate at which villagers chop down trees so it's not a gather rate bonus it just increases the time that it takes to chop a tree down uh, and then looking forward we have feudal age technology of double broad axe which increases the gathering rate of wood by 15 percent and then the same again for lumber preservation and cross court saw in castle age and imperial age so then we have the mining camp we've got a technology to research in the feudal age castle age and the imperial age all of which increase the villager gathering rate for gold and stone by 15 percent next thing we're going to have a look at is the barracks so these are the standard units the generic units that everybody gets within the barracks so uh, within the dark age you get the spearmen feudal age you can upgrade it to hardened spearmen and so on and so on and then the only other unit you get is the man at arms which you don't get until the castle age some civilizations do get men at arms a little bit earlier such as the english who get a dark age man at arms and the holy roman empire gets a feudal age man at arms so the spearmen is basically your anti-cavalry specialist 
weak against armoured infantry and also ranged attack. Man at arms, it's tough infantry with good damage, they're pretty slow moving but they do have a high armour so they are quite a strong unit. No technologies to research at the barracks, it's just purely for military production. So moving on to the dock, there's quite a lot happening here. But first of all we'll have a look at the units that can be produced from there so within the dark age we have the fishing boat and the transport ship no military ships can be built in the dark age then moving into the feudal age we have the trade ship and in this instance the galley but there will be different names depending on civilizations and essentially what it is is it's classed as an archer ship Moving forward into the castle age we have the hawk again this will change name depending on your civilization but essentially this is called an attack ship then we have the demolition ship again this will have a different name depending on civilization but it's called an incendiary ship and then finally in the imperial age you can get the uh, final unit which is the carrack but again for all the civilizations it will be named differently and it will look differently as well and this is essentially the warship so looking at these different classifications of ships as we say we've got the archer ship this is an oared vessel filled with a crew of archers it has increased maneuverability and benefits from blacksmith upgrades then we'll have a look at the attack ship class the hawk in this instance this ship is equipped with broadside ballista and essentially this is the counter to the arrow ships however it does have low maneuverability we then have the incendiary ships this is essentially a ship that's uh, packed with explosives it will go into the enemy ships and detonate and then you've lost the ship forever. It does have an area of effect and damage is reduced further from the explosion center and it has no other weapons other than self-destruction. I expect it's pretty strong against everything. And then finally we have the Carrack or the warship class. So this is a large sailed war vessel armed with broadside cannons. It's an anti-building specialist and it does move pretty slow so pretty much the same as the cannon galleons in age of empires 2. so now looking at the generic technologies that you can get in the dock now other civilizations will have their own unique technologies that you can research within the dock but these are the generic ones that everybody gets so first of all in the feudal age we've got extended lines and additional sails so extended lines increases the gathering rate of fishing ships by plus 20 percent and their carry capacity by plus 10 and additional sales increases the movement speed of all ships by 15 percent moving into the castle age technologies we have extra ballista navigator lookout drift nets and armored hull so extra ballista this is an attack ship technology it adds a swivel ballista to attack ships so they do have quite low maneuverability and having this swivelly ballista will certainly help now this can fire in any direction and deals 15 damage we then have Navigator Lookout, which increases the line of sight of military ships by plus two and their range by plus one, so quite a handy one to have. We then have Drift Nets, which again, just acts like the uh, extended lines, but this one increases the rate of gathering by 15% and the carry capacity by plus 20. And then we have Armored Hull, which increases the armor of all military ships by plus two. So moving into the Imperial Age technologies, we have a warship technology upgrade. So for those cannon galleons, we have chaser cannons, which increases the weapon range by plus one. And then we have explosives, which is a incendiary ship technology. This increases the damage of the ships by plus 40%. And then the final Dark Age building to have a look at is the outpost, which operates just as a normal outpost. It just gives you line of sight in the Dark Age. But upon reaching the feudal age, you can upgrade it by adding arrow slits, which is an implant. Now all outposts can only have one emplacement so you can upgrade those with various upgrades as we go through so you've got arrow slits to start off with in the feudal age which can be upgraded to spring old emplacements in the castle age and cannon emplacements in the feudal age. And as you can see we also have fortify outpost. This gives additional 1000 health and plus 5 fire armor to the outpost so just make it a little bit harder to bring down but that's it for the dark age buildings let's have a look at the feudal age buildings so within the feudal age this is where you can actually start making your town centers now town centers are very expensive they do cost quite a lot of stone so it's perhaps going to be quite difficult to get a, an economy boom going unlike in age of empires 2 uh, but you also get the market the blacksmith you can make battering rams and siege towers from your military units so whether that's the melee infantry or the ranged infantry that can all make battering rams and siege towers which is quite an interesting mechanic you don't need a siege workshop for those you can just build them on the go we then have the archery range the stable and then you have your stone wall stone gate and stone towers so first of all we'll have a little look at the market which just acts the same as a normal market but there's actually no technologies in the market which is interesting 
you can just make a trader which you can send off to an allies market to generate gold so we'll have a little look at the blacksmith so there's quite a lot happening in the blacksmith and it's probably quite different to what we used to certainly within age of empires 2 so looking at the top there we have bloomery which is the melee damage upgrade and then we have the corresponding castle age and imperial age upgrades as well which all three of those upgrade your melee damage by plus one next up we have steeled arrow which increases the range damage of all non-siege units by plus one then we have fitted leather work and the corresponding upgrades for that this increases the melee armor by plus one for all non-siege units then we have iron undermesh as well as the castle age and imperial age equivalents these increase the ranged armor by plus one for all non-siege units there are two other technologies within the blacksmith we have siege engineering this allows your infantry to make the siege towers and battering rams in the field and then we have military academy in the castle age which reduces the time it takes to produce infantry cavalry siege transport units and buildings doesn't affect religious units or other support units okay so moving on to the archery range this is the uh, standard archery range, the generic archery range. So you can get the archer, the crossbowman, and hand cannoneer. Now, dependent on civilizations, again, there will be some variations here. The Chinese do get an extra unit, and the English replace the archer with longbowman. So the archer is very good against non-armored units. Against armored units, it's pretty much useless. Crossbowman is an anti-armor specialist. So this will work against any armored unit, whether it be a knight, whether it be a man at arms, it will do great damage. So crossbowman is your counter unit for armored units. And then you've got the hand cannon here, which is pretty much good against everything, but it's expensive. And that's an Imperial Age unit. Moving on to the stable, we have the feudal age units, which are the scout and the horseman. Horseman is very, very good for raiding an economy early. Pretty much like a scout rush in Age of Empires 2. But they are a little bit fragile with not being armoured. And then in the Castle Age we do get the Knights. Again with this there is going to be some variations between civilizations in terms of unique units. And I know the Chinese has the Knight replaced with the Lancer. And other civilizations get Feudal Age Knights as well. So moving on from that we have the castle age building so as you can see it looks as though most of the game is going to be played in the dark age and the feudal age because there's not a huge amount of extra we can do in the castle age we only have three buildings we have to keep the monastery and the siege workshop so looking at the keep first this acts essentially the same as an outpost so it's like your castle but you can't produce anything it's just a big fortified building which you can upgrade with spring old emplacements or cannon emplacements and it does have a technology for boiling oil so towers and keeps gain boiling oil attack against nearby units that deal 30 damage so following on from that we have the monastery there's not really that many techs in there for the monks uh, but this is where you produce your monks and then you get herbal medicine piety and tithe bonds so herbal medicine this increases the healing rate by 100 percent then we have piety this increases the health of the monks by plus 40 and then we have tithe bonds Relics placed in a monastery provide an income of plus 30 food, plus 30 wood, and plus 30 stone every minute on top of the gold that they already gain. Following on from that, we have the Siege Workshop. This is the generic Siege Workshop. It does alter a little bit between civilizations, but these are the, essentially the units that all civilizations will get, apart from the Chinese who replace the mangonel with the nest of bees. So we have the Spring Old, then we have the mangonel, and then we have the Catway Trebuchet. And then in the Imperial Age, we can get the Bombard Cannon. Now, some civilizations will also have an extra cannon there, which are generally good against either Siege or Infantry. So the Spring Old, this is effective at taking out high value targets at long range. So it's got a very long range, it sets up quickly, and it has bonus damage against Siege engines, but it's not very good against buildings. We then have the Trebuchet, which is fantastic against buildings, but it's inaccurate against units. The Mangonel fires multiple projectiles, dealing damage in an area. Area, and it's great against massed up units and we have the bombard cannon which is excellent against buildings or any stubborn targets deals very high damage looking at the technologies within the siege workshop we have greased axles this increases the movement speed of siege by plus 20 percent we have adjustable crossbars which is a technology for the mangonels which reduces the reload time by 25 percent we have roller shutter triggers which is for the spring holds this increases the range by plus two and reduces reload time by minus 25 percent and then finally we have Siege Works which increases the health of Siege Engines by plus 20% and the ranged armour by plus 3. And then finally moving into the Imperial Age we only have one building 
and that's the university. So we're just going to have a look at the university tax now. So we have chemistry, which increases the damage of gunpowder units by plus 20%. We have biology, which increases the health of all cavalry by plus 20%. So it's effectively bloodlines uh, in Age of Empires 2, but bloodlines you get in Feudal Age in Age of Empires 2, and you don't get it into Imperial Age here. And then we have geometry, which increases the damage of rams and trebuchets by plus 30%. And then the final technologies from the university, we have uh, incendiary arrows. So this increases the damage of range units and buildings by plus 20% doesn't apply to gunpowder units. We have court architects, which increases the health of all buildings by plus 30%. And then finally, elite army tactics, which increases the health of all melee infantry by plus 10% and the range by plus 10%. So that's it for this one, guys. Do check the end screen for a playlist for all the different civs and their tech trees so you can see how they all differ. I hope you learned from this one, and I'll see you on the next one.